plagues, pandemics, and diseases due to bacteria and viruses have long haunted our human history. However, today, we almost take that for our health for granted. That's because due to the fact that we have over-the-counter products and we also have the public health system in which it provides almost all the needs that we need to protect ourselves from, from the most common spreads and most deadly diseases. However, this really wasn't the case a century ago. And in a, a century ago, that was World War I. Now, m a lot, many diseases were rampant at this time, from cholera to influenza, but influenza was probably the worst. This is due to the fact that <clears throat> many people didn't understand what viruses were, and we also very much believed in germ theory, which was the fact that bacteria caused almost every single disease, and, that, and it's transferable, can, contagious from one person to another. However, even with this knowledge, we still overcrowded many camps, and many people not only got influenza, but also got the side effects such as pneumonia. And this is horrible, because more than 14 army camps in the U.S. alone were extremely overcrowded, and these camps basically had a mortality rate of more than one-fourth, 25% uh, or one-fourth of them becoming victims. And this is horrible too because at this time we were in a war or more namely World War One. And just to report in this perspective how bad the disease was, two hundred twenty seven thousand soldiers were put were put on the front lines as a uh, as American expeditionary forces. However, three hundred forty thousand were hospitalized compared to that two hundred twenty seven thousand in j just one regiment. Uh, but thankfully, since then, we have created a vaccine, but that was in 1934 by Jonas Salk. And since, and since that time, 20 million people have died from the Spanish flu. And later, Jonas Salk also created a vaccine for polio. However, over the course of the century, we've come up with many more vaccines, and we've come to understand what a virus is. The first vaccine actually coming from the 1700s by Edward Jenner, and he found the vaccine for smallpox, in which, and the way he found it wasn't actually by understanding what virus was, but observing. And he observed that milk, milkmaids after catching cowpox, they were much more less likely to catch smallpox. And so, by injecting a very non-lethal version of cowpox into, into a 13-year-old boy, he became immune to smallpox. However, we still did, really didn't understand what viruses were until much more years later, uh, until it was in the Salk's time. Now, this is really more or less the basis of the vaccine, and really helped Yanis Salk himself. And the way a vaccine really works is that its defensive system will destroy invaders, and really any invaders, including bacteria, and it's always working. However, sometimes, such as viruses, they will overrun the, will overrun the immune system, and if, even if it fights, manages to fight off that disease, other diseases will kill it instead. And that's much the case to, to old age. You don't necessarily die from old age, but rather from the diseases that come from the vulnerability of your body. However, <clears throat> viruses, our body also has a very, very interesting way of combating new diseases. In which, when it, ca when it catches a disease and survives it, it creates a mem uh, almost a photogenic memory or a, or, or almost a mugshot of the disease. And then, using this mugshot, whenever the disease comes back, it's more likely to fight it off much easily. More easily. And vaccines, using this process, uh, use a much non-lethal version of the target disease 
injects it into the body so the immune system can fight it off but also at the same time create uh, almost a mugshot of it and then it will know when the actual lethal disease comes it will be able to fight it off much more easily and to the, however many people question why we create flu vaccines today more and more developing each year and this is due to the fact that flu is also a very very interesting form of virus in which it's eight strands of RNA, DNA, it will always, um, it, you, it mutates and evolves and causes the immune system to overreact. And this is largely the case to, in, during the Spanish flu, where younger people die more often than older people, older people who are older than them. And this is because their immune systems were much more stronger and it reacted much more to the flu. So, and, and, but now more recently we've identified that H1N1 and other avian strands were the, were the reason to the Spanish flu. <clears throat> However, actually, but the reason why we found it now and not before is because the Spanish flu kind of died down. And this is, might have been the, to the fact during the war that because it spread so quickly, it devolved into a not much more non-lethal version in which, and then people kind of forgot about it. And this is really bad because in 1979, we also had what's called the swine flu. And this went rampant across the nation. And that's mainly also due to the fact of misinformation, which is the next topic I want to really address and really the uh, purpose of this uh, speech. Misinformation can really misdirect the public and that was the case in 1979. We related the flu to a very very bad and very very horrible mental disease but really it wasn't the case and so people stopped vaccinating and actually this has been really the truth for a very long time and still not visible now. However, it's lately become more of a problem as people who the internet has coined anti-vaxxers will often preach that taking vaccinations will lead to autism or do more harm than good. And that's not the case, but and even if we tell them that these viral diseases can be prevented by vaccinations, and vaccinations have caused less death, they won't believe that. Until, unless they've had first-hand experience. And that's true for anyone. If you, you learn from a problem best from first-hand experience, assuming that you survive that, and while well, it's non-humane, obviously, inhumane to put someone through a horrible, just overall t terrible and vitally inhumane situation of the Spanish flu, and we don't want to repeat that. And the best way to teach people other than first-hand experience is really by through education. And that's what our American system, government system is supposed to impose. However, we don't really impose history as much as <clears throat> and many other topics. And that's what I think the, my, my point here is today, is that education should be much more solidified, solidified through history and teaching the public about what might not be as good through and therefore we can stop misinformation and we can instead focus on the more important things like space or engineering physics all of that but we first have to tell the general public the most basic information the most the most <clears throat> important of all our health and what could happen if we don't abide to vaccination and well that's true for Spanish flu and if we I think if we tell more people about the Spanish flu or the 1979 swine flu I believe a lot more people will come to believe and turn sides against anti-vaxxers and so we can't let ignorance affect the population it did in 1979 and actually, ignorance also came a lot as a re factor to the Spanish flu. 
as I've said before, army generals didn't listen to the army doctors who told them that overcrowding was probably the worst possible thing that we could have done. And, well, as we see the results, they did exactly that, and millions of people died.